iOS 26 has finally been released and it brings the new and controversial liquid glass design to our iPhones. So after updating, you'll notice the new look almost immediately. And you'll really notice it if you pull down from the top that everything just gets a little bit glassier, a little bit more transparent, and you can see all the colors underneath. And where it'll take the most getting used to is probably in the control center. So when you pull down for your control center, initially it can look very messy depending on what's going on behind. So if you have a light colored wallpaper, or if you have some widgets, something with a lot of colors, especially a lot of bright colors, it can just look pretty messy and even distracting. If you're really struggling with readability here, there are two things you can do to make it a little bit more manageable. So first, if you go into settings and then down to accessibility until you see display and text size, the first option here is reduce transparency. So if you toggle this on and we go back into the control center, you'll see the background is no longer transparent. So everything is much more visible and you can even add it as a button or a toggle on your control center in case you only want to turn it on in certain situations. And so to do that, you can just hold on the control center, hit add a control, and it's under vision accessibility and you'll see reduce transparency. The other option, if we go back into settings, is increase contrast. So if you toggle on increase contrast and we go back to control center, You'll see the background is still transparent, but it's added like this white border around all of the individual icons to make them stand out a little bit more. So those are your two options. And you can add that as well to the control center with increased contrast. Liquid Glass also brings a more consistent layout within the apps themselves. So if you go into an app, let's say the mail app, you'll almost always find the search bar at the bottom now, and a lot of the menu options are found together. If you press the three dots, usually in the top right, you'll get all of your different menu options. And even in notes, you'll see the search bar at the bottom and the menu in the top right. If we head into Safari, you'll see that the URL bar is still at the bottom, but all of the menu items are now within the three dots on the right. So all your bookmarks, your reading list, everything now, your tabs are all within here. And this honestly took me the longest to get used to and it was the most frustrating part because everything seemed to take more clicks. To get to my bookmarks was two clicks instead of one. But thankfully there are a few hidden gestures that I'm going to share with you that make this a little bit easier. So when you want to see all your tabs, instead of having to press twice the button and then all tabs, what you can do now is swipe up on the URL bar to access all your tabs, or you can double click on the three dots. And then you can still use the URL bar as a trackpad to swipe between your different tabs, but you can also long press on the URL bar and this I find is the quickest way to close an individual tab or even close all of the tabs you have open. Another good thing to know is if ever you want to find a specific word or search for a specific word on the page, you can always go to the little menu to the left of the URL bar and scroll down and find the find on page button. But even faster is just to type the word into the URL. So let's say I want to find the word hotspot. If it's there, you'll see it at the bottom, find hotspot on this page. And I click that and it'll show me the word hotspot everywhere on this web page. But if you still really despise the new Safari look, you can change it in settings. Over to settings and I'm just going to search for Safari to make this a little bit quicker and open that up. You can scroll down now until you see tabs. And then you have three options. So compact is what it currently is. You can switch it to bottom and then it gets you as close as possible to what it used to be. So you have all of your bookmarks and share button down at the bottom, or you can even switch it to top, which separates it. So the URL bar is at the top and your menu buttons are at the bottom. Next up, the phone app has been completely redesigned. So when you go into your phone app for the first time, you're gonna notice the bottom now has three different tabs. So calls, which is all of your favorites and your recents together. To add people to this top list, you would just hit this edit button 
and then edit favorites and then you can add or remove and now when you click on anyone on the top bar it immediately calls them but down here what's a big improvement in my opinion is when you click on one of the recents it does not call them immediately now it just opens like a contact card with some more information but if you press on the phone button on the right or the little phone icon that will call the person in your recents list and if you hate everything about this you can click the little hamburger menu in the top right and you can switch it back to classic so you have all your menu items at the bottom and your recents list but what you can also do if you just want to be able to tap to call someone from your recents you can go into settings and we're going to search for phone again and then scroll down and just toggle on tap recents to call and then it will look like kind of how it used to be with a little eye icon on the right to get more information but the default of tapping would actually call the person and then while we're in the phone settings the other piece of this is filtering unknown callers so it'll actually put the unknown callers into a different place altogether so if we go back to our phone list the hamburger menu you'll now see an unknown callers tag or when you click on that it'll bring you to any of the unknown callers that have called you and you can delete them or mark them as known the messages app also got a bit of an update so when you go in here you don't notice necessarily anything right away except the search bar is again at the bottom and you have another hamburger menu here at the top right when you click on this there's also an area for unknown senders so if you click into here any of the unknown numbers that you get will show up here instead you also have a tab for spam and any of your recently just deleted messages so it just cleans up your main message list a little bit more and again the filtering is something you would turn on in settings so if you go over to messages and down to unknown senders there's also the screen unknown senders toggle that you can turn on and I would though go in and click allow notifications and I've toggled on verification codes that way even though those are unknown numbers that's something I sometimes want to look at and go see so it's just a little bit easier to have that at the top of my messages list as opposed to in the separate unknown senders tab here but that's matter of preference screenshots also got a bit of a glow up in ios 26 so now when you take a screenshot you still take it the same way by pressing the top volume button and the power button and now your screenshots will open in this like full view or full screen mode instead of that little thumbnail in the bottom and so it's really easy to just drag and resize you have a markup tool your share button that all still looks the same when you press the check mark you can save it to photos files or whatever you need to do with it but if you prefer the old way of having the little thumbnail in the bottom left you can still go into settings and into general and then now you'll see a new option screen capture so when you click into this you can change it by toggling off full screen previews and when you take a screenshot it'll go back to the little thumbnail first uh, and then tap in to get into the full screen if you're looking for your camera app and can't find it don't worry it still exists it just looks like this now and when you open it up you'll notice it's not just the icon that looks different the entire app has been redesigned most notably at the bottom now you'll see only two options photo and video but once you interact with them you'll see the other options and you can just swipe through to get to everything else a little tip for this is all your photo options are to the right and all your video options are to the left so if I click on video and I want to get to cinematic slow-mo time lapse those are all video modes and to the right portrait spatial panel all photo modes then to get your menu buttons like the exposure and timer you have two ways of doing it you can just swipe up to open up this menu or you can press this little two by three button on the top to open the same thing probably my favorite update is now in the top left you can click to quickly change your format and resolution and same thing in video mode 
you can click to quickly change ProRes resolution frame rate. So you don't have to dig through the settings anymore for this. You do here have your flash button and your night mode button, but if you rarely use them, you can actually turn them off in settings. So if we go to settings and we go to camera, you'll now see an option for indicators and you can come in here and turn off flash, live photo or action mode. So it removes them from the top and just makes it a little bit cleaner. But again, you can still swipe up or press the six buttons to get them back. It just removes that quick access from the top right. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. The Photos app is back to normal and it has been fixed in iOS 26. So now when you go into the Photos app, you will have tabs at the bottom once again. So you'll have a library tab that is all of your photos, collections tab, and then the search is on the right. And But if you go into the collections tab, you'll now have your pinned albums, shared albums, media types and utilities, recent days, trips, all of that good stuff in one place. And you can do a lot of the same things. So you have an edit button, you can edit your pins or reorder them. You can collapse and expand any of these sections or any of these collections. And at the bottom, you can also hit reorder. Now it's important to note though that you can no longer uncheck them the way we used to do to completely remove them from the view. All you can do with the collections now is just reorder them. And then any of the ones you don't want to use, you would just have to collapse. So it's progress and it's definitely better than it was in iOS 18. If you like today's video, then make sure you're subscribed because I have videos coming up with all of the updates to iPad OS and Mac OS that you're not going to want to miss. And if you're considering upgrading your phone this year, but you're not sure if it's worth it, watch this video next. And that's it. So have a great day. Bye.